Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 79 of Gains, and this one is titled A Concerned Class. You slept on and off for most of that day, unable to do much more than that. Your body really had taken a hit, and you'd been unaware of just how badly it needed the recovery time. The vibe in the classroom while you were recuperating had an interesting hue. By now most of the class had found out about your injury and a few were silently blaming Bakugo for his conduct. Ida, especially being the lover of all things fair, was especially irked and had a stern look on his face for the duration of the first class. As soon as that first bell rang, the class split into two groups, one interrogating Kiri as to your condition and the others inquiring quizzically of Bakugo as to what had happened, wanting to make up their own minds about how much to blame him for this. Is Yin okay? Mina asked Kiri with concern, both palms firmly planted on his desk as she locked eyes with him. She's okay. She's just resting today, he said with a small forced smile. Honestly, he just wanted to be by your side. He didn't want to be there where you weren't. Is it true that she's got amnesia? Eureka asked with a worried look on her face, standing off a little to Kiri's right. Yeah, she doesn't remember the event, but she knows who she is and where she is and she recognises me and Bakugo, so I think she'll be okay as far as that's concerned, he replied. Are we able to visit her? Momo asked, her hands clasped together in front of her, looking like she was anxiously waiting for a test result to be read out. Um, I'm not sure. She was ordered to rest, so maybe we need to respect that, Kiri replied. He hated that rule, and had every intention on breaking it when he brought your homework to you that afternoon. That was going to be his excuse to see you. Over on Bakugo's table, things were a little less cordial. Dude, what happened? Kaminari asked as he straddled the chair backwards, staring into the eyes of his classmate. You already know what happened, dunce face. Get out of my face, Bakugo growled. Yeah, but I want to hear it from you. You were there, right? He pressed. I said, back off or I'll kill you, Bakugo seethed, his face looking very pinched and annoyed. Did you actually hit her with your quirk? Sarah asked, standing a little bit behind Kaminari. No, Bakugo seethed. I find that hard to believe, the voice of Ida said with haughty airs from behind Bakugo a little. He was standing back but listening in so that he could give his two cents. Quite frankly, I find it very distasteful how you act. Before he could finish his sentence though, Bakugo had jumped up and swung around then grabbed him by the collar of his shirt and pulled his face inches from his. Listen here, four eyes. You weren't there. You don't know what happened. Now sit down before I blast your ass in the next week. Bakugo growled, his palms crackling menacingly. Ida cleared his throat and adjusted his glasses, but otherwise remained silent as Bakugo shoved him back a bit and then let go. Listen up, you extras! Bakugo suddenly shouted loudly into the room, gaining the attention of everyone that he already had gained the attention of when he lashed out at Ida. You're all dumb! Stop telling me what I already know! If you keep talking about things you don't understand, I'm going to kill you all! I know it's my fault, now shut up! Kiri had been watching Bakugo's face closely as he ranted and could see that his fellow classmate and friend was on the verge of tears. This was hurting him as much as it was hurting Kiri, and the redhead had compassion for him. It's not Bakugo's fault, the redhead suddenly said, jumping up to defend the blonde. Shut up, E! Bakugo barked. No, Kiri said back, turning his attention on the rest of the class. What happened happened. It was an accident. Yin's been working very hard on herself and her quirk. And sometimes when you work hard, you just get into situations that could be dangerous. We all know this. It's not anything new. Just because Bakugo was there doesn't mean it's his fault. I know we're all feeling a little helpless and that we want Yin to be okay. We want to turn back time and be able to be there to save her or stop her. No one understands that better than I do. He hung his head. But don't blame anyone. She's going to be okay. And she's going to be stronger than before. So let's face this day with a smile for her sake and welcome her back warmly when she's ready, yes? A lull hung over the listeners, and then suddenly everyone's faces brightened. Yes, Eureka said brightly. We're heroes in training, right? Nothing keeps us down, plus ultra! She raised her fist to the sky, filling everyone with confidence and spurring them to act. Plus ultra, Momo replied, copying her actions, which then caught on like wildfire amongst the rest of the class. At that point, the bell for second class rang, and there ended the rally in your favour, and everyone took their seats. Around 3.30pm, both Kiri and Bakugo showed up at your door. You opened it and looked at them both. I'm not accepting any homework or visitors until I know you've both spoken and worked things out, you said pointedly. Kiri gave you a small smile and bashfully looked down. Uh, yeah, it's been sorted, he said shyly. You looked at Bakugo for a confirmation. Yeah, he grunted. 
it's fine. He didn't quite believe them, but thought that they both looked like they needed a hug, so he stepped back to invite them in. Bakugo was first in, so you reached up and wrapped your arms around his neck, feeling like you were dangling from a height he was that much taller than you. Oh, you said when he wrapped his arms around your waist and lifted you clean off the floor. You better be feeling better, he whispered raspily into your neck. Um, I do now, he whispered back. He nodded and put you down, and then stepped aside for Kiri to have his turn. Kiri was a little shorter than Bakugo, who was still a decent height, and his body felt a little more sturdy than your blonde boyfriend's. His hug was gentle and warm, and he melted into you as you wrapped your arms around his neck and squeezed him gently. Are you really okay? Kiri asked softly, resting his head over your shoulder. Yeah, I am, I promise. I've been resting all day, you replied, breathing in his scent. Okay, as long as you're okay, Kiri replied, letting you go so you could take the homework sheet from him. Mine too, Bakugo grunted, and you took his papers from him and chuckled. Why is life so unfair? Now I have to do two lots of homework, you said playfully. Um, it's okay. Don't don't feel like you need to do mine. I, I just wanted to bring it to you so I could see you, Kiri said bashfully. It's the whole trio together again. The boys are back in business. Stay tuned for chapter 80 coming tomorrow. I'll see you then.